we are encouraged to uh, use their microphone and um, in the Hello, Andres. Uh, could you please try again? We don't hear you so well. Thank you. Uh, okay. Hello. Yes, now it's much better. Wonder. Uh, Andres, you can go. You can start. Please go ahead. Please. Very much. Thank you very much, uh, everybody, for joining this webinar on launching the SIP COVID-19 form. My name is Andres de Francisco. I am the director of the department Family Health Promotion and the Life Course here at PAHO in Washington, D.C. I'm very uh, glad to be here with you uh, opening this uh, webinar on a very, very important topic. As you would know, like we do all that COVID-19 uh, pandemic, it's a priority now in the world. It's a very challenging situation with a new virus, brand new virus, so was which Unity is being found out. How is it actually um, going to be controlled? We do have uh, relatively little information. The speed of the spread of the pandemic is amazing. Uh, there are basically over 4 million cases of countries around the world. It's, um, it, it's a challenge that brings everybody uh, around the world to be concerned, but um, try to do their best to limit the implication, uh, the consequences, both in their health side, economic, also among others. Within this, we are working very closely with WHO and Geneva on a number of areas uh, with the departments of. Uh, um, basically with the 3 billion uh, uh, clusters in order to align some of the activities. And we are very pleased to have colleagues of WHO in this. In this uh, From our side, PAHO is working intensively to provide a coordinated response to the requirements of the organization. As you would know, there is an indigenous management system in place, and all departments are working with the incidents. We do have a series of working groups because this is a 
along the whole organization. So we have working groups that are feeding in a way information to the response, evidence, data, analysis, projections of the pandemic. that might be uh, reaching some point to be deployed on relation looking at the mental health and the first level of response and how the different models are aligning issues of immunization medicines as well as issues as how to reach vulnerable populations for which many of the are being Proposed might or might not be fit. However, what is clear is that pandemic has very evidence information. And one of the big things here is what is the evidence of the production page and also within different. Um, Areas uh, within a, a country. The question which is, is we would like to, there are uh, efforts to pick up information, to standardize the information that's collected. We do know, for example, that the mortality is much higher in people over 60 years, over 60 years, and frankly, over 85 years, and on young. One of the things we do not know very well is what is the risk of pregnant women in newborn to be actually affected. One of the problem is that testing is scanty and also not uh, aligned uh, nor standardized in various countries of the, the region, uh, the American Caribbean region. And because of that, it's very difficult really to know what is the comparability. And we are interested in looking at reports of maternal deaths. We know that China did not report maternal deaths at the beginning of the pandemic. It had reported maternal deaths subsequent. And we have not seen reports on the maternal deaths in Italy, Spain, in the United States of America. But we actually do have reports uh, on cases, basic maternal deaths in Mexico, Brazil, in Dominican Republic. In fact, there is an effort of Mexico to test all pregnant women um, to look at the results of COVID-19 uh, in the, in the as, 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 uh, impact my important mortality rates, uh, but not much uh, systematic uh, collection of data has been in the region. And there are a few countries with disaggregated information according to pregnancy. And therefore, we need to work on a routine standardized clinical epidemiological information system compatible with other systems in the world developed in other countries and regions. And therefore, what we want to do here is uh, to present you what has been the progress that has been done in order to promote registration, consolidation, and registration of reporting and evidence in countries. We will um, hear in this presentation instrument and more than the instrument, the system really developed by CLAP on the basis of the perinatal information system, which will allow the recording, con consolidation and analysis of the situation in rel relation to COVID-19 in women, maternal and perinatal groups. And we will also see how this system has the potential and in fact has already been expanded to some other areas in the region and we'll welcome your views and your inputs on how best to do this. I think that if we do not measure uh, maternal mortality related to COVID-19 and newborn mortality, we will, missing, be, we will be missing a very important element and subgroup of the population 
um, which probably will not necessarily be known unless we measure and we report. So um, we, I welcome you very much to this discussion and want to hear your comments and your inputs uh, once the presentations are over. This is all what I want to say from my side. Susanne, Sarruya, and Club, thank you very much to you and to the whole team for organizing this. And please go ahead. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, you all. You are very welcome. I give the floor to Carlos Dura, our regional advisor for health for the first presentation. Go ahead, Andres, and thank you, Susanne. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, during the next uh, few minutes, we'd like to share with you uh, the rationale behind this development, the characteristics and content of the force that have been developed, as Dr. De Francisco mentioned, uh, linked to COVID and maternal and newborn health. And later, my colleagues will address the characteristics and utilities of the of the system. So, <clears throat> what is the rationale behind this development? Uh, the forms that I'm going to, to present and, and share with you are part of and um, are supported also by the perimeter information system uh, as a specific model. I'm uh, recording data. Uh, on mothers and newborns related to respiratory infections and in the context of the pandemic due to COVID-19. The forms that we will present here were developed in order to harmonize data collection, but at the same time in line with other existing registries developed from different global networks and consortia that have been discussed and sharing information. In a similar way, as the system has already been developed in the past and it's in place in, in many countries, these forms are oriented from a clinical perspective. So uh, considering the specific aspects that involve care to the woman and the newborn and facilitating the identification of risk conditions. Uh, you can see the, the highlight in, in yellow uh, on some specific uh, information that we are going to, to see in detail in a minute. Facilitating the identification of risk conditions, uh, of different conditions that need to be uh, involved and alert the care provider. And in terms of assessing clinical conditions of women and newborns, as well as assessing the implementation of essential care uh, for for either the for both the mother and the newborn, and this is also something important within this context. We also uh, promote with this tool to implement essential care at the time of discharge for both the mother and the newborn, and finally to contribute to data analysis from the information collected and recorded. So the main characteristics of these forms are that they complement, they are complement of the maternal and perinatal information that is in place in SIP modules that can be used linked to other components of the, of the SIP in those facilities that already use SIP. But at the same time, this, this tool that we are presenting to you can be used as a standalone tool, giving access to the same utilities and the same forms uh, that can be used even if you don't uh, use SIP or SIP is in, uh, downloaded in your system. And it includes, it, it includes two components, the maternal and perinatal component and the newborn component that we are going to see in detail. So the maternal and perinatal form involves uh, three main components, which is 
information related to the time of admission, at the time of hospitalization, and termination of the pregnancy, and finally, at the discharge of the mother. The newborn care form uh, includes data on clinical conditions of the newborn and care provided either after birth or in the case of rehospitalization, if this is the case for the newborn, the care provided and the conditions upon discharge also. So let's move to the maternal, maternal and perinatal form. Uh, it starts considering data related to the case definition that includes, as you can see, the confirmation of suspicion of infection on, of some pathogens of public health concern, um, some key signs and symptoms, and uh, a history of health report that were uh, health report, self reported by the by the mother, and specifically the suspicion or confirmation of COVID-19. Uh, a criterion that we use in SIP and is a priority, and you can see also here is the possibility of assessing inequities so that conditions such as ethnicity, marital status, the highest level of education attained uh, from the mother, or whether the woman is a health worker can be recorded and will allow to analyze inequities in some point, at some point. And finally, the results uh, as are reported for the main pathogens, such as different coronaviruses, influenza, and other infections. Related to the current respiratory infection, the form allows to record signs and symptoms and medication that the woman has presented or received uh, during the previous 14 days that can be recorded in the form. And similarly, the symptoms and signs and clinical condition evaluated, but at this time, at the time of consultation. So this form, this component uh, collects the data at the time of the consultation. And if applicable, based on the conditions, clinical condition of the mother, the admission date is recorded on the, on the left, and uh, the process continues with the, with the following information. So now we are moving to the component related to admission. Uh, at this time, the level of care uh, required, uh, that can be the minimal intermediate or intensive care that has to be provided to the mother is recorded, and also a clinical assessment at the time of admission that includes uh, body temperature, blood pressure, oximetry, heart rate, for example, you can see that can be recorded at this stage. Uh, continuing with the information at the time of admission, this section records the signs and symptoms of respiratory infection assessed at the time of admission uh, to the corresponding level of care and the reported signs and symptoms that may occur and have been uh, included here, as you can see. Likewise, we have mentioned the form allows to register all therapeutic, uh, therapeutic indication, indications including symptomatic medication, experimental treatments, or those specifically linked to the pregnancy and ongoing life support, as you can see uh, that, um, in the base of this slide, related to oxygen, ventilation support, inotropics, or ECMO. Uh, continuing with the information related to admission at this stage, we can see the, the form or the component related to the results from the laboratory tests. And in this case, you can observe um, results that include a complete list of hematological determinations, liver function, kidney function, internal environment, gases. And in addition, the results from 
radiology and imaging diagnosis that includes include x-ray and CT scan. At this time, we can see the data related to termination of pregnancy, specifically included, include uh, whether the birth occurred uh, specifically in the course of the infection or whether the infection had already remitted in the mother at the time of the delivery, the outcome of the pregnancy, the type of delivery, the rupture of membranes, also the data related to number of prenatal visits, uh, gestation and age at the time of childbirth, uh, the condition of the multiple birth, the medication received, presentation, fetal size, uh, companion during uh, labor, uh, delivery and postpartum, and the administration of antenatal steroids. Uh, information related to birth, mainly related to the position in labor, episiotomy, uh, the use of oxytocin, characteristics of the placenta, and the time of at core clamping. And finally, information related to the newborn, uh, which includes sex, birth weight, anthropometry, gestational age at birth, Abgar score, and information related to uh, resuscitation and vital support provided to the newborn. Similarly uh, to how it is recorded in SIB, uh, the presence of comorbidities has been as included in this form due to the possible effect that this may have on the course of uh, respiratory infection. So you can see here detailed information regarding comorbidities such as hypertension, diabetes, uh, hemorrhage, infections, other disorders under non-obstetric conditions, and also obstetric complications that have been considered here. Now we can see the, the information related to uh, conditions uh, related to near miss and severe morbidity in the, in the pregnant woman. Uh, and you can see the clinical criteria, criterion for the definition, the laboratory, as well as the therapeutic and support interventions considered in near miss conditions that have been included in the form, the date and condition of the woman at the time of discharge, uh, and uh, as you can see, the registration of samples of the uh, biology study of different uh, samples as amniotic fluid, placenta, uh, core blood, vaginal swab, stool and rectal swab, and samples from abortions and also from mother's milk. And as I said, information related to maternal discharge, the, the, the date and time of discharge, and the type of discharge, uh, having the option of uh, being dead, uh, medical discharge, of the woman's informed uh, choice of discharge, the length of state and the weight, the mother's weight at the time of discharge. And finally, the condition having the options uh, between healthy, no one available information with pathology or maternal death. Now let's move to the newborn component. And as you remember, we have just mentioned a minute ago about the characteristics of the newborn that are included in the maternal and perinatal component. Related to the newborn cure, uh, as based on the concerns due to this condition, mother and newborn accommodation and preventive care uh, are related in the context of the pandemic are essential. So the form allows to record the characteristics of the, of the accommodation and uh, preserving uh, joint accommodation of the mother and the newborn and ensuring the adherence to the recommendations from WHO and PAHO on this regard. On this regard. So you can see that the form allows to record if the mother and the baby stay together, if the baby was isolated and the specific 
prevention measures were addressed and also the level of care during the stay in total days of uh, intensive care, special care unit, isolation room, uh, room or rooming in with the, with the mother. Uh, related to, again, to the care of the newborn, uh, we can see here in this section that is intended to record the presence and the type of signs and symptoms associated with COVID infection, as well as the administration of ventilatory support, uh, the type and the duration of the specific support provided for this newborn. Uh, now we can see here the possibility of identifying specific comorbidities that may be common uh, conditions that can be presented in newborns and you have the opportunity to record all other comorbidities out of COVID-19 and also the possibility of uh, recording information birth defects and specific treatment provided to the newborn. Here we have another essential issue related to COVID and so sustaining the rights for the newborn in terms of providing the best practices, practices and the best uh, ways of feeding. So here you can see uh, the possibility of recording the type of feeding that was provided to the newborn and also the result of the sample if it was the case of the maternal mean uh, and the result. You can see the specific uh, section uh, for laboratory tests, imaging, X-ray and CT scan, and the specific results of SARS uh, coronavirus, uh, coronavirus 2 uh, for nasal swab, oropharyngeal stools, and other samples that could have been taken for the newborn. The lab tests include, again, uh, hematological and uh, hepatic and other functions. And finally, at the time of this chart, you have you can see here the information that can be collected related to the the, the conditions and the, the location uh, that the newborn will be discharged uh, if will send to the home, uh, uh, refer to other institution, or if the newborn died the condition, healthy with complication or refer to other institution, the characteristics of the feeding at discharge, again, trying to sustain and support uh, promoting breastfeeding. And finally, in order to sustain essential interventions, the possibility of recording immunization and referral to postnatal uh, control, and also the provision of, of signs of alarm and other recommendations to the mother and the person in, in charge of providing care to the newborn once at home. And finally, a place for observations. It's a blank space where additional information can be recorded. So this is the, the presentation. Thank you very much. And we continue with the next presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, very beautiful talk. We need quite transmission. So thank you very much, Pablo. Then I give the floor now for Nuru Gomez or
Rodolfo, go ahead. ¿Escuchan a Rodolfo? ¿Alguien me contesta? Yes. We, we, we improved the... We improved it. So, Rodolfo, please come from my room, from my office, uh, because you can hear me. So... Okay. Uh, you hear me now. Yes, so now we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Loud clear. Sorry, I will share my my presentation again. I was I was speaking without the mic. I'm so sorry. I need to share the presentation. Can you see the presentation? Yes, come in. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, the perinatal informational system that we are uh, talking about is a free of charge system that could be used in countries, in facilities, and the, the analysis could be from the facility or regional level. Uh, the important issue here is that you don't need to use the full system in order to be able to use the COVID and pregnancy and neonatal health report or form. The neonatal and pregnant women COVID report can be used as a standalone separately from the use of the, the system for the other topics. This is the content that I will develop in the next minutes. I will share with you some information about how you can describe a variable from the system, how filters can be used in order to cross many other variables as in one, and variable crossing, the tactic or you know, the, the, how the system works, and the distribution, how we can analyze distribution of one variable, just you know, as few elements of the possibilities that the system offer for the users. And at the end, I will show you some of the preset reports used by countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. This is the system, how, is, how the, the system looks like if you want to uh, go ahead and try. We have a platform for uh, a beta platform that people can enter, use, test and be familiar with the system. The, one of the first elements that you will need to choose is language. The system is already in Spanish, Portuguese, Francais, and from the Netherlands. You can use, you know, with what language is required in your country. That is the first selection that you can use. The second, and I will go there immediately, is how to analyze information and data. Particularly data, uh, I will show you two examples, how we can uh, analyze data from a continuous variable and from a dichotomic variable. For, exa for example, if we want to analyze an intentional pregnancy in adolescents, we can use, because the system is developed, is built on uh, technical capacity to be used in cell phones, tablets, and computers, if you want to know an, an intentional pregnancy in adolescence, for example, just using the variables of the question if the pregnancy was planned or not, and take, taking the second variable, age, we here select the two variables, if the pregnancy was planned and age. And how that looks like in the system, the first variable, we select planned pregnancy and the filters, we will be using just one filter. The maternal age less than 19 years old, that means adolescence. And we choose description here in the, in the two options, uh, description 
and we can add as many filters as we want. We, we can select COVID positive what mothers, uh, suspicious cases of COVID, whatever could be the variable. I just will be using one uh, preloaded uh, database. How that looks like? With one click, you can have millions of records or hundreds or 10 will take seconds to offer you this report. Like the, dump, the proportion of uh, adolescents that are planning or not their pregnancies. For example, in the first table, we can see here that the 70% of the adolescents know have a planned pregnancy. And in the second area, in the graphic that is automatic, we can see here an increasing number of unplanned pregnancies in this group of uh, population. We can see a reduction on planned pregnancies uh, in the same time. Every bar represents one year, 2016 to 19. In those four years, we can see clearly, just with one click, that the unplanned pregnancies were increased in, in this population. A second description will be how a variable, a continuous variable, is distributed in the, in the sample or in the, it's not really a sample, in the population that we are covering. And I will show you two examples, maternal age and hemoglobin. We here select the time, analy analyzing data, but we will go to the second option here in the blue, distribution of a variable. Always we can filter, we can put filters as many as we want to. We will narrow the selection of the group that we will be analyzing or uh, describing or the analyzing the distribution. Here we have age and we have maternal age in our population it is having that distribution. Then we know that we can use, you know, tests for analyzing differences or just uh, the proportion of women that are covered by a different intervention. And the second option is in the system, we have a record, we have one variable, hemoglobin less than 20 weeks of gestation. And if we click in the description, we will see how the hemoglobin is distributed in that population. Just one click. It's not any, anything different than that. And I will show you the last uh, minutes, the few last minutes, how the basic statistics that covers almost all the crucial uh, elements of the perinatal health reporting systems, variables, and indicators. For example, we have here the basis, basic statistics that we can use mother age as a filter or for the full population, or we can put here uh, COVID positive patients or neonates, whatever variable that we decide we can put as a filter. And the basic statistics are describing, for example, the life births according to uh, fetal uh, Could you put your mind in? We have stillbirths, that means that are more than uh, 500 grams or uh, more than two weeks. And we can analyze mortality, fetal mortality, perinatal mortality, maternal death, and the system automatically calculated in seconds. The description of the mother diseases or comorbidities or, you know, preeclampsia, eclampsia as causes of maternal death or near miss or severe complications. Hemorrhages, uh, the transmission of the vertical infections from the mother to the child. And if the uh, antenatal care is early and the quality of the antenatal care. And finally, we have the childbirth information uh, that we have to, to understand that uh, if the spon spontaneous onset is 
in the number and proportion of cases and the number of induced and the elective C-section. C-section is one of the elements that uh, will be changing according to the, the literature when uh, COVID is increasing numbers uh, of pregnant women receiving the infection. Many countries will try or will tend to increase uh, C-section rates. And we know that that is not the case in all, all positive women. But we will have here a tool that we will be able to analyze the different groups. I will show you that in, in a minute. But we can have newborn and infant APGAR scores and measurements of gestational age, weight, and the screening of the most important vertical transmitted diseases. Uh, we have one other component that is automatic, it's, uh, the near miss indicator. We can have the definition of near miss from WHO using the clinical criteria, laboratory criteria, or intervention criteria. And in one click, we can have these four uh, elements described easily, just doing it one click, the death rate, the near miss and maternal mortality ratio, criteria case report sheet, and extremely severe maternal morbidity reason. We can, uh, we can have that, you know, uh, automatically very easy and uh, and i mentioned before that the c-section will have a tendency to increase and in many countries is already an epidemic but the robson criteria indicators that could take months in one facility to, to be analyzed in the 10 groups that robson and who described as a recommended strategy to reduce unnecessary c-section we can have that information in one click very easily. The 10 groups here, and we can choose, for example, filtering by maternal age. We can have the description of the 10 uh, Robson groups by maternal age or by, you know, other filter could be positive COVID women. And if that is not enough, I can show you that the system have 15 free variables that could be added and defined by the center, by the region or by the country. And those 15 free variables can be the required variables for your setting. And uh, to finalize, I, we want to show that the perinatal information system can be used in the life course. We will have soon a contraception form. We have an adolescent already very used in, in, in Latin America, adolescence form, the perinatal form, abortion form, near miss form, community form that is designed to be used in cell phones for people who uh, doesn't, uh, are unable to, to write uh, and can choose from uh, some icons. And the newborn forms that we have, the neonatal form and the birth defect form or covering the full range of many stages in the life course. Thank you very much. We are here for your questions. Thank you, Rodolfo. Uh, as Rodolfo showed, it's a very important not only for women, inclusive, but also and also forget the data. The most important is not one more effort. It's a system that you can get the data. And you don't need to have all the, the records for the six. You can only have the six for of each line. So now I give you the floor for the team of six. Let me give two information first. We said when we have we it be available yes. all the presentation. Second, also uh, we put in the conversation uh, in the chat uh, may for guests before the record 
in the system. If you have any difficult or team sick, can answer with this name. Uh, I put again the mail in the chat now. Okay, thank you so much. Go ahead. Uh, Jose Luis, go ahead. Jose Luis is thank you. a regional advisor for information and channel. Go ahead, Jose Luis. Am, am I? Sí, perdón, se han cruzado dos reuniones. Voy a cambiar de computadora. Es que ya empezaron el clave. Let me, let me, should I share, should I share my, my, my screen? Because I'm seeing, I'm going to try to share my screen, please. Okay. And this will be the Microsoft PowerPoint. Cancel the Microsoft. I'm trying to share my screen, sorry. Luis, you're sharing your screen, please. Can I share mine? Can you put can you put your the first slide of your screen then? My NATO. I'm not seeing the slides. Sorry. Okay, do you want me to put it? It's not a problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you much. Thank you all, dear colleagues. Good morning, good afternoon for some. I will try to explain something that has already been said many times, which is for those who have never used SIP Plot or the SIP information system, how we could in one month develop a system that will get data from COVID as a special module of C plus because we have been for decades working on a system that collects data at the health services. This data, would you mind, next slide. This data has been in the region for decades. It's initially with the perinatal information system main component, which is the perinatal clinical record. And there were others already presented at, at, in, in, in different countries that collected information on neonatal intensive care, on loss of a pregnancy, even a community perinatal information system with iconographic data for those areas which are not uh, literate. Is a near miss and a seeker and a congenital anomalies mo module and even a notes module. So there are many modules that are, have already been used, and even we have had regional, regional standards for Spanish speaking countries, for Caribbean countries. But lately, during the last five years, we have developed customized modules for countries that needed additional maybe 5%, 10% more data or changes, like changes in their protocols for requesting information. Instead of having in the first semester, in the last semester, they will have it every trimester. So we have to do and design a special module customized for each country. And you can see that there are many countries that have customized SIP forms. And what we did, 
with only during the last months to create a new module, which is a COVID module that we have already seen. In, in all those modules, we have, as I was explaining the problem of the world, we had a power of data data even being able to treat this point with the real data of each patient, but also in the population, we can do analysis. And not just analysis at centralized office at the Ministry of Health, but providing a free software to do local data analysis, which is most important for monitoring at the health services. So we have data analysis that have been shown by Rodolfo, automatic reports, lots of them, and also, and this is something I'm going to try to explain in the next one, is that this system in their C++ version is able to integrate, have interoperability with any other health information system, and even more than that. So I would like to see the next slide to explain the, that the system was implemented already, or in the previous version of the SIP Windows, which was not web-based, or has ever been used, seldom used, and you will see in blue, those that have already the SIP Plus integrate and, and integrated with a, a health information system. The SIP Windows in green, not the web one, and the seldom used. And you can see here in South America, in Central America, and the Caribbean, and in North America, the countries and in different <clears throat> stages of use. So this is just to provide those that have never been used, being in the Latin American and Caribbean region, a perspective of the scope of coverage that C has already had during the last decades in our region. So this was very easy for us to add a new form for COVID that could be used for C++ users or a new form that will be only used for those who want to use COVID data. And we have developed that in a short period of time, but in order to include it in this system, we, we will not be able to create a system so fast as in one month. So that's the response that we provided. Next, please. And the basic for this is that we have a platform, which is a platform that integrates data files. And this platform, which is a free software, <laughs> Look, can, be installed, can be installed in any server, independently of the operating system. It could be Linux or Windows. And this platform can be accessed connecting any modern Android, as you can see, tablet, or Mac, or Windows. So, from any of these electronic devices, you can connect to this platform. And the platform will talk, will connect, will dialogue with the eHealth system, which may have data from other servers like government and digital links, the life of visual rights birth certificate, a death certificate, civil identity, or immunization programs. And in many countries, we have already done to connect it also with their own electronic health record. So they use the SIP for the data that are, in, uh, that are entered during the perinatal care that means from the first antenatal visit until the discharge of the mother, but it will go into dialoguing, integrated in a link that will convert interoperability between both systems in any in electronic health records. So this is what we are presenting, which is a system that is very versatile, very integrative, interoperable, with many others. So in the next slide, what I'm gonna show, next one is, 
Full screen. Next. but I'm not hearing you. Audio and audio. No, Good morning, Parker. Do you mind repeating what you said? I will not be able to hear you. Uh, Good morning, Parker. Okay, now we will be uh, sharing from here until Dr. Jose Luis uh, is connected again. How you can be entering the system? You can put the user, the password, and then log in. And uh, now you can see that uh, at live the information that we would, would uh, share by a PowerPoint presentation. This is live. This is the system. This is how we are. Entering right now the system, you can see uh, the new form and identification. We want to share you uh, that you need to identify your country. First, for example, we will put Uruguay. The next will be the identification type, uh, that what document we will use. And finally, what identification will be uh, for your record. Then we put search, and then we can have the uh, information if the previous pregnancy was already in the system, and what form we will be uh, using. Then we can have here the COVID-19 maternal form and the neonatal form as a separate two forms that we can use. We will be entering, for example, one form. We will be uh, selecting as uh, for a record that has some data. Just to show you one pre-loaded uh, record in order to, to get familiar how that looks like. For example, we will choose Angela Moore, that is you know a client with five previous pregnancies and an actual record in the system. We see here how the look how the system looks like. This without all the information that was described before, but this is live. This is at the real time. We can click, for example, which variables are selected as a criteria. And we have nine uh, screens that we cover the full record with the last menstrual period the expected uh, the end of the pregnancy, medication that had before, we can click, we can click, we can choose, for example, if the mother is receiving or not, uh, you know, inhibitors of the, uh, or angiotensin blockers, you know, 
this is live. We can change that. We can go another. And this is, for example, we will fill this form, the symptom. Look how easy it is to just clicking on the dots, appear the checkbox, and the information is already in the system. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You can follow from here. I'm so sorry about a uh, part of the uh, Dr. Jose Luis is not in class, it's not in Montevideo, it's far away. Uh, because the whole situation, I don't even know. So now we conclude the first presentation. Go ahead, Pato. No, 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 no. I, I just wonder if, it, if I made and with a slide, that's okay. And this, this is just, just to show you data that have already been entered in the C plus uh, the, in in the real C plus in the web. So what you saw before were just uh, forms empty, and this is a, this is a sample on how they look at at the time you enter the data. We were planning to pr provide this in in online using the web, but it's, as as it, this is a this is a webinar, the the use of the application it takes a lot band of bandwidth. So we will not be, we were not able to do it. So what I'm now showing you how it looks like the forms in the case you have already entered a patient. In this case, the patient name is here, the address, and you can see that every click is in the form at the time that you enter the data, they will look like this. You will try them on the on the platform when we provide you the user and the, the password in order to do it yourself from your computers. Next. So this is a respiratory infection module with the inclusion criteria and all the data on a mother that is pregnant. And as you can see, the symptoms and the medication at the time the mother arrives and it's before the diagnosis are there, like Dr. Pablo showed. And you can see it real data copied from a data entry in the web. Next one. So what you're seeing here is the maternal SIP COVID form, and this is a third screen of nine, and the name of the mother, the, name of the number of pregnancy, and also if it's one single pregnancy or a multiple pregnancy. And the rest is all the checks that were the text of this example, and the next one is the fourth screen coming. Yes. And you see, this is this is a prescription at admission form. And next. Let me see. And 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 then you 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 can see this as laboratory exams. Yes, I'm seeing you're using the real data. Would you like to enter? Okay, that's our okay. This is this is what we showed is a, a case that has already been entered. It is in the platform. You will be able to access with user and password later. Thank you. So now, now you conclude all the presentation. As you see, it's a uh, system, this is network, and the, now you have how to connect and where to get information. You have the mail, 
and the web space were connected. Also, you sent to you all the presentation. Please send us now or in the chat your name. So it'd be easy for us send the name. Of course, you send all the information for our focal points in the country. But I see many people from another countries abroad, not in America. So please uh, put in the chat for us for the club the your mail so you can send all the information. Anyway, it be your page we, we can get this and this other. So let me give the floor for all of you for the question, for the suggestion. All of you want to say, please raise your hands or I see many people with the mic open. Raise the hand so someone go ahead. Karen, Karen, I see your hand. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Good morning. Hello. Is it okay that I can? Hi, this is Karen uh, Kim with the WHO headquarters, uh, Department of Sexual and Reproductive Health. Congratulations, felicitaciones. This is fantastic. Um, I'm very excited that uh, this system has expanded and brought on and responded to COVID. Um, just for the sake of time, I've narrowed down to three questions. <laughs> so so um, my first question is the um, when going through it, and I just saw the, the form that that discussed the end of the pregnancy or the um, termination of pregnancy. Is there, and I think I just caught there was one question whether it was abortion, if it resulted in abortion, is there a connection to um, or an ability to find out more information, especially given that um, induced abortion services also have been impacted in the epidemic? And is it possible to link over to SIP A? Um, just because I know SIP A has, you know, will be able to gather the detailed information. Um, so that's my first question. And then my second question is, um, you know, the, I, I know we've been working together with, um, you know, trying to harmonize the, the information from the WHO case reporting form that, um, that we've, that we have as well. And we also have the pregnancy module that has just been revised and updated and posted on the website. So I just wanted to ask, um, you know, how much of an overlap there is. And in connection, that leads me to my third question is the ability to share data, because I think this will be really important, seeing that there's many different platforms to uh, put in clinical data information and SIP, the SIP network is very vast and very, uh, very important. And so it would be great to see how uh, we can connect and ensure that, you know, with us having, we're hosting a clinical data platform as well, being able to share that da data. So I wanted to understand and hear more about that process. Over. Thank you, Carol. Very good question. I give the floor to Guilherme Secati. Uh, I don't see their hand for me in the chat so I can see the question or I see the name of the people who want to go. Go ahead, Guilherme. I am here. Good morning to everyone. I am a little bit late, but I'm here. Congratulations for you all for the initiative. Thank you, Guilherme. Uh, 
Susan? Susan? Susan, there, there was one question that will not answer it. Susan? Go ahead, go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead. No, 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 just uh, the third question that was raised in the, by the first uh, colleague that talked, Karen, I understand, from Geneva. Uh, you, you, were ask, you were asking about sharing, and, and what this, this system, sharing databases, what this system allows is to have all the databases with the same, with the same standard. But the, 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 the fact is, that the, num the, the data belong to the, to the country or to the institution. We have no data shared by the institution. Unless there is a, there is a definition by the institution under a project that will share data with someone. Because in... in I have a lot of a, a lot of voices I can listen. Sorry, so I was asked. I was answering that this is not something that you can share unless you get the permissions to share them. The only the only big, big important fact is that they are collected with the standard glossary and instruction manuals in the same way. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Jose Luis. Uh, please, I 
I we hear some people that want to talk. Go ahead, someone that try to talk in the group. We open for this. Hi, good morning. Um, this is Aubrey from um Trinidad, OTT office. Good morning, everyone. Very big presentation. I have a question with regards um, to the incident. Will each country that has SIP launched already, like, sent an installation, or will this be somewhat of a cloud based where we can just point our clients to to a link? Did you say? So, sorry, did you say? we couldn't hear did you. you. Say? Can you write? Say? Question. I I I I I I I I I and you have more 10 minutes for questions and suggestions, please. Uh, I take the opportunity to say that for the countries and for the partners we, that we discussed in this session, we can have another session uh, for discuss another, another aspect of this. We can hear someone that tried to talk. Uh, so I ask you all, all, all of you, please close your mouth. My lady. to talk, please go ahead. Hi, good morning. This is Aubrey from um Try again, Audrey. Please go ahead. Audrey, uh, I see that you tried to, to talk. Please go ahead. Are, are you hearing me now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, good morning. My question is one of the slides that Otto had showed earlier showed um, the SIP, the new version, as being um, somewhat of a cloud based system. Um, as opposed to a server client system that we have here in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I was just wondering if you could give me a little clarification whether if it is like a server client that we have here, will, will we be sent the installation? Or if it is a cloud-based system, um, can you tell, give me a little clarification how our client machines will connect to it? Will it be via URL or, I, or IP or, or, or so on? Yes, it, it's the same the same server, the client server that you're using. You can you can connect with other servers. I may ask uh, Luis Mainero uh, to, to to answer you that, but it's exactly the same. There's no changes in the in the way that it was installed in in Trinidad already. And the only thing we we had to do is to allow you to enter to the module of COVID, and we'll interact with the other modules you are using already. It's the same. There is nothing that the same software that you use, the, the same that you have installed, 
will allow you to have the COVID uh, module and enter the additional data that you already collected during the antenatal care. Okay, thank you, Pato. Um, how soon will we get these um, installation files so that we can upgrade our servers here? We are working on a beta, beta uh, version that you will be able to access uh, separately what, what you have. And Luis and the, and, the, and the IT team will contact you when, it's a, when you can download the, the C plus with this form and then use it in, your own net, in all your network. So it won't be more than a week. It's, it's just we, we already finished the, the video version. We have to do some changes, but, the, but access to how it works on a, on a server, which is a, a, a training server, will be immediately tomorrow. Thank you, Audrey, for your question. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Trinidad Tobago is a country that is all the country, the C plus, and for them, it is very easy to implement this. If a country uses using the C, it's very easy. It's an updated version, and you have the version with the new port and the new hardware. To be easy, please already contact us and contact the mail and the web page that will show me the now and you can get this. If it's a person, institution, country that not use the system, it's easy the same way. You can go to the platform, have the system, and use only for COVID-19. You don't need to use a lot of record that you have all. You can use only the record that you are interested to. So, uh, we open for the question more three minutes. And uh, I hope Andres is in the Hello, Susanne, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you very much, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, for this discussion. Uh, we apologize for the, the technical challenges. Um, it's something that I think is part of the new norm, given the situation of uh, of uh, teleworking and, and and social distancing but i think it's important that uh, at least we can communicate and we can uh, let us know uh, wh what the actual uh, following uh, what is happening in the in the various uh, in the various situations and in the various initiatives um, I think what we have uh, seen with this uh, system is that, first of all, it does um, it does fulfill a gap, an identified gap. Um, perhaps one import, one of the important points that were uh, raised during this discussion is how does this uh, complement ongoing initiatives. We do not want to create a separate system. We want to create a system that is providing information uh, alongside the systems that are available. And that's why what the flexibility of the SIP system, it's actually very interesting in the uh, in, in, in this context. Um, it is indeed uh, very important to, um, in a way to raise awareness of the relevance of having this uh, disaggregated information for capturing data, but it's more for policy making and for implementation 
of uh, programs and activities within areas and subregions and and uh, areas in countries in which it's more we see this is not so much a as I said at the beginning, not only a format, uh, but it's actually a system. Now, the question I think is, is it has been asked here is also um, how can we uh, align this with with the information systems in the in in in, in the in in our countries and in the regions? Um, I mentioned also that um, we do have a, a system in the. In, in in working group in Bajo that is discussing data information systems and so on and, and we are working very close with them to see what how can this be aligned with the existing six systems and perhaps um the the, the question is are we actually uh progressing in terms of implementing these in countries and i think we are perhaps um it would be good. Uh, I think uh, maybe uh, I think it's some part of who said it would be good that we actually looked a little bit more in detail. How can we really materialize this in countries? And um, perhaps the, the question is, how can we think of a way in which um, we can utilize either existing projects or existing systems or existing expanding a little bit, a little bit, no expanding with COVID-19 um the perinatal information system in countries that are using using it or basically uh, the very basic step of filling the formularies and send it, send send them around i think um the the the, the, the proof is in the pudding and um we thank you very much for the comments that you made we'll take them into consideration for the next iterations of this work and we'll hope to continue in uh, in touch with all of you so as to improve the the distribution dissemination but also in particular the use and the feasibility of having this in countries and providing useful information and providing valuable information for decision making and 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 policy but policy policy making um so i thank you very much again and i will send it back to uh susanne Serruya if in case that there is another thing to be to be added thank you so much thank you andres uh, yes as you said uh, most important is the next step. The next step is how to promote this in each country, how you can together have more data and have a project to improve the surveillance, improve the care for the mothers and people. So we really want to thank you for all of you and say that I see a, uh, a lot of people that uh, try to connect for the next section. We need to close this section because it's English uh, for have a separate record for central people and it will open again the, the room, the WebEx. So I will close the section and open again. Voy a cerrar esta sesión para poder guardar la grabación en, en inglés para enviar a todos, sino la grabación va a quedar muy, muy, muy larga y vamos a abrir casi inmediatamente. Muchas gracias a todos. Thank you very much. You have a very good evening and we are available for any questions, any suggestions you have. Thank you and bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.